Gospel of John, chapter 32, and the one who follows. Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 32, and follow. I'm telling you the truth, Jesus said. What Moses gave you was no the bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the real bread from heaven. For the bread that God gives is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they ask him, give us this bread always. I am the bread of life, Jesus told them. Those who come to me will never be hungry. Those who believe in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Something that I've been uh, praying very strongly after I came back from Fatima. Uh, you know, I don't know why this happened, but it's like I came back from Fatima and having all this experience and all this uh, movement inside of me, and all of a sudden I found more and more lack of faith into the Eucharist and into, you know, you can see uh, a lot of people, you know, they, um, how I should say that doesn't sound bad, but it's like uh, people we like to have a faith or a religion to their convenience. Hmm? And why I tell you this? Because I'm a priest, you know, I am not saying nothing confidential. I'm just in general sharing with you what my my process in the priesthood to help and to teach the people. But I, I have people who comes to talk to me to tell me what to do for them. And I need to put myself and say, listen, I can't do that for you. I just need to do what the Lord asked me to do for you. And they get angry and they leave the church and they go to a, some other non-Catholic church and they find what they want to do, you know? Especially the, the young generations, you know, sometimes especially with weddings, they come and say, Father, I want you to marry me in the beach. I can, you know? The Catholic church doesn't, that, doesn't do weddings in the shore. It needs to be inside of the church. So they get leave it with me and they just walk away. 
and they go to a minister or pay a minister and they go and they do the wedding and they are happy ever everlasting you know thinking that that was the true wedding and it was not you know so we need to be careful on that but that is the problem you know sometimes and this is what I really would like you to make you understand and to help you, you know, because it's been my biggest security and that is why I'm a Catholic priest, you know, because um, in finding where Jesus truly is and what is the true devotion and the true religion, it's helped me to be secure in God. Hmm? And I found it in the Catholic Church. Why? The main, main, main thing is the Eucharist. And the second main, main, main thing for me is Our Lady. For with both of them, there is no way to make a mistake. Hmm? I tried something different. I told you when I was a teenager and, and it didn't work because I, I realized very quickly that that was not enough was not really the direction that the Lord wanted in me to go. So, Fatima is about the Eucharist. It's about to teach us about the Eucharist and to prepare us. <coughs> to prepare us to see Jesus in the Eucharist, to love Jesus in the Eucharist, to adore Jesus in the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. And to bring the people to the Eucharist as a priest, you know, that is my advice, especially to many people, my spiritual sons and daughters that come for a spiritual direction, I, I, I send them to visit Jesus always, because he is the best uh, of the best, you know, is where you need to go to find yourself. That happened to me. When I was doing my discernment to the priesthood, I was between 15 and 16, I was in high school. My pastor, Father Victor, who baptized me, gave me first communion, confirmation, who was my spiritual father and everything. Uh, you know, I went with my concerns about becoming a priest, to be a priest, you know. And he heard me and he heard everything I was going through and thinking. And I was thinking he was going to give me any answers of all my questions to enter into the seminary. And the only thing that he told me after he, I talked for an hour probably to him, he said, go to the Blessed Sacrament. That's it. And I just said, that's it? I said, yes, that's it. And he just stood up and left and left me with that. And I was so angry, you know? And I felt empty, like... I don't get it, you know, how can be, you know, Father, why Father is doing this, you know, but he gave me the best advice, because I didn't have a choice, that he was the only priest, so if he was not there for me, I didn't have any other choice, so I needed to go just to talk to Jesus, and I started to do it, I started to go to talk to Jesus, and was the best advice. Because in Jesus, in the Eucharist, I found all the answers that I needed to enter into the seminary. Hmm? Because you not only talk to him and tell him what is going on with you and what you are worried or concerned. It's, about, it's not just praying. God really answers you, answer into your heart. But also he answers you through situations. Hmm? If I don't listen, if I go and talk quickly with him and I run away because I'm busy with my life, he will use something in my life, some situation to tell me what he needed to tell me when I was so in a hurry, I didn't stay there for listening. Hmm? So God always made his point in us. If we are faithful to doing it, you know, we need to do it. It's not like, I, you know, once in a while I go, to, I go to visit Jesus and he's going to tell me everything that I miss in a whole year. It won't happen, you know. The way that works is if we are faithful to him, he's faithful to us and he gave us what we need. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, but we will miss it no matter what. Not because of him, it's because of us. Hmm? So... Um, it's very important 
my dear sisters, to uh, be centered in our faith in what we need to be. I can say to you, you know, and I, I love everyone, and I share with non-Catholics, and, and I share about them. I am not ashamed to tell them that I know that Jesus is truly alive in the Eucharist, and I love the Blessed Mother. If they don't want to hear, they walk away, you know. And if some of them, they respect me, and they listen. And, and I said, that is why I'm Catholic. And I convinced and I feel completely secure, secure in my faith because there is no way to make a mistake following and loving and adoring and promoting Jesus alive in the Eucharist and Our Lady. Hmm? So uh, I want to invite you to consider the same thing. You know, I don't know how is your stage in life and how are you in your faith. No, I, I imagine that all of you are Catholic. If you are Catholic, you need to be convinced. Hmm? You need to be convinced in the Eucharist, and you need to be convinced in Our Lady. Hmm? They are our direction in life, to go to heaven, to meet the Lord when we uh, die, when the Lord called us to leave this earth, to meet Him is what will take us there. And look like that, the biggest attack, and that is why uh, these three little children needed to sacrifice and give their life so uh, in, in such a heroic, he, in heroic, in, heroic. He, how is that? heroic way, you know, because, uh, you know, it's so, so much needed because the evil attack starts. In my experience as a priest, the evil always attack the Blessed Mother, always, because hate her. Hmm? And that is one of the biggest points that people, you know, that are not Catholic come after us, about why you need an intermediary, why you go to her, or you Catholic worship Mary more than Jesus, and all of that. Always the same accusations, you know? But they don't understand that she directs us to Him. Hmm? If we pray to her, we end it adoring Jesus, because that is what she does. Now in Medjugorje, for example, to give you an example, we bring people, you know, Lately, you know, most of the people who goes with me are Catholic and very uh, involved in the church and serving. But in the beginning of my pilgrimage, I brought people who were no Catholics, and and people who were no or were Catholics by name, but that's it, you know. And they went, and when you get to Medjugorje, you know, you enter into the mystery of Our Lady, Queen of Peace. You hear everything that happened, the visionary, the message, and all of that. But all of that directed to the center of the town, which is the church. And you ended confessing your sins, and you ended participating in, in Mass, and you ended adoring Jesus. Hmm? It's the three biggest things in Medjugorje. Confession, Mass, adoration. That is the way to go. That is the direction that we need to do. To be able, you know, to respond to God faithfully. In every shrine that you go, in any, in any part of the world, Lourdes, Guadalupe, it's the same thing. Masses, adorations, confession, pray the rosary. That's it. That is the true devotion, the Catholicism. It's no more than that. But to do all of that, live in it, convince meaning what you are praying and what that you're doing because you know that it's true. You know that through that you really are close to God and you are responding to Him. For example, Padre Pio. Padre Pio didn't do much, you know. He did a lot, but he didn't do much that we think that he could do. He did only three things or two things mostly. Hmm? 
mass, confession, and pray the rosary. That is all that he did. You know? He will do mass, who will be two or three hours because he will enter in ecstasy. So he will go and, and then rosary, he prayed the rosary day and night. Father Fortunato told us that he probably prayed more than 20 rosaries a day. So that was his biggest prayer. And then he will be spending hours and hours and hours and hours of confession because he, that, he got that gift to see your soul. He will see inside of you and he will see uh, all your sins. And if you will go to confession with Padre Pio, get ready, you know, to be truthful because if you were lying, he will smack in your face and throw you out and tell you to come back when you really have the desire to change and to confess. He won't allow you and absolve you if you were not ready. So that is the way to go, my dear sisters. Sometimes we get very distracted in our devotion, you know, the new age and the Reiki and the yoga and, and the pills and the anxiety and the stress, the exercise, you know. People are more faithful and committed to exercise than the prayer life. And even though you need to exercise to be healthy, but if your spirit is not healthy, your body won't heal. You know? It's very much important the spiritual health than the physically. And sometimes here we give more importance to the physically health than the spiritual. And that is why so much illness around because we don't care too much to the spiritual, and the spiritual is more important than the physical. Hmm? So it's very important to, to realize that. If you are healthy spiritually, your body is going to be healthy physically. Hmm? So, Our Lady appeared in Fatima, and she brought this message of reparation to the Eucharist and this message of salvation of souls. Why Our Lady wanted so much to save the souls? Well, of course, first of all, she's a mother. She doesn't want any one of her kids to be lost. She wanted them to be safe. But the problem with, with uh, salvation, you no. Know, if we think about, well, what means salvation? Did that mean to become a saint and then I will be saved? Did that mean to don't have sin or to don't commit sin and then I'm safe? Hmm? What means salvation from God and from Our Lady? Well, first, salvation means conversion. What means conversion? Conversion means change for better. Hmm? In God's eyes is to change for better. Did I need to change? Of course, I need to change. It's always, life is about changing and to change. Constantly. Our body changes, you know, our family changes, our economy changes, our job sometimes changes. Even now in our church, our church changes, you know, the reality in the church sometimes, you know. So it's all about changing. But changing for better, not for worse. But one of the biggest concerns of Our Lady was that the souls were going to hell. Hmm? Is that a reality? Hell really exists? Yes, it does. Hmm? It does exist. San Theologian says no, because, you know, some, the, some of them are atheists because they try to find the reason of everything. People who find the reason for everything, they don't believe. 
if everything can be explained then there is no need of faith so sometimes even inside of the church we have philosoph philosoph uh, philosophers and, and theologians that they don't believe hmm? but God allows them for some reason to be in the church to give us the explanation of certain things that we need to know but the most important is faith hmm? is to believe to be convinced <coughs> but the biggest concern of our lady is not those who doesn't believe is about those who believe but they ruin their life and they ruin their soul sinning hmm? committing sin and this is the point and it's very very simple but it's tough we need to realize, my dear sister, that every time that we commit a sin, we let the evil in. But sin causes a lot of damage in our lives. Because it's not just falling in a lie. That lie brings all kind of damage in ourselves and whoever else we are lying for too. Hmm? Not only denies the truth, not only a lie denies the truth, it causes all kind of other things. Hmm? Denies the truth but corrupt, you know, yourself and bring all other kind of things that it ruins you. And that really causes you to be not able to make heaven. Because in heaven, that is all perfect. That is all clear, pure. I remember not too long ago, I have a dream about heaven. And my dream was, for some reason, it's like the Lord took me there. But I was not able to enter yet. Because he, wa he wanted to give me a teaching. And the teaching was and make me feel that. I said, you see, Ariel, look, look the people here and look the, what is heaven about, you know. This is the reality. If you keep something, you know, sometimes as a people we like to cheat and to say, well, I answer the Lord, but also I have this in this, I do these things in the side. They are not too bad, you know, we cannot be perfect. And even that won't allow me to be there because God doesn't allow anything to be uh, to be imperfect that everything needs to be perfect not even the most minimal black that in our in our life can allow you to enter into heaven because there is none so that means if I am not completely free of everything and clear, I cannot be there. And it's not that God excludes me, I exclude myself. That is what was the whole realization of the whole experience of heaven when I went and the Lord was showing me that I will private myself to be there because my persistence in to don't change certain things that I don't want to change. Do you understand? So, uh, when we are stubborn, trying to keep ourselves in our own ways and knowing God's ways, we ourselves are, are stopping or are damaging the opportunity to be able to be there. It's like, let us say, um, that God prepared this banquet, you know? And he, the Lord, want us to come to this banquet dressed in certain way, you know? And we know that we can get, you know, the dress to wear because it's up there, it's been given to us. But we don't want to wear it. We want to wear what we feel like it, that we want to wear. And then we go there and everybody is wearing what the Lord has, but I am not, but I want to enter, and 
I've been denied to enter because I am not wearing what I was supposed to wear. But it's not God's fault of them, it's my fault. Do you understand? So that is the seriousness about salvation. God gave us everything to be safe, to be free, to be clear, to be pure. It's up to us to do it. And the problem with sin is that when we commit sin, we let the devil in. Something gets damaged in ourselves, in our soul, in our spirit, in our body. We carry guilt. You know, there is something that do you hear about the indulgence in the church. Why we need to have indulgence? Because sin comes with a guilt. That guilt, even if we go to confession and we are forgiven, that guilt remains in us. For some reason, the Lord doesn't take that away. That remains in us. I think that is the punishment for committing the sin. Hmm? So that, but it's not God's fault, it's our fault. Hmm? That guilt remains in us. And so only through a, a spiritual process of conversion, with the pass of the time and the graces that we receive from the Lord, then we get rid, in some point, we get rid of that guilt. That guilt does disappear in some point. But sometimes it doesn't. So we need the indulgences to be able to get rid of those guilt in us. And finally, they, they leave us and then finally we are free and clean. But if we don't get rid of that guilt when we go to heaven and we want to enter and we carry that, we are not allowed to enter. It's like to be in appropriate dress, to be able to enter that. So we need to go to some place that is purgatory where we are going to work in that guilt. I guess the prayer of our family and people will take and pray until finally we get rid of that guilt and then we are able finally to enter into heaven. Hmm? So if we think that to make heaven is that easy, it's not. Hmm? That is why, and I don't want, I am not saying this to scare you, it's the reality of Fatima. This is what Our Lady really revealed to us in Fatima. She came seriously to make us realize that we need to be good and we need to do good and we need to be safe of sin. We cannot lose our soul and we cannot lose our life. We need to gain it and she came to help us through the three little shepherds of Fatima to make us realize that. Hmm? So we cannot feel comfortable to be sinners. We cannot feel comfortable to sin. Or we cannot feel comfortable and stubborn about ourselves of certain things that we do wrong and we want to justify that because we hurt ourselves. It's like somebody saying, I made that rosary, and I know I didn't make it, but I said, I made that rosary, and I convinced everybody that I did it, and everybody believed. But God knows the truth. No? Then I go to heaven, and I told, even I lied to the Lord, Lord, I make that rosary, and the Lord is going to say, you didn't do it. Why you lie? You didn't do it. You didn't do the rosary. So you can come here in that way. Because you did it. You were starving in your own self to believe something that is not true in you. And that's it. You lose the opportunity. It's too late. Hmm? And that is what sin does. And that is Jean Paul II. Saint Jean Paul II was one of the, of the Pope who wrote a lot about this. Because he said it. The devil is being so sneaky and his triumph right now in the world is to make people convinced and believe that they are not sinning. A lot of people think that they don't. 
and we do constantly. Hmm? And every time that we sin, my dear sisters, like it or don't like it, we lose, we lose the opportunity to enter into heaven. It is serious. Hmm? It's more serious than taking a pill for our headache. Hmm? Or it's more serious to enter in a diet, you know, to lose weight. It is because that will be just for certain time, you know. When then we lose the weight, we are happy, you know. I'm, I, I made it, you know, I'm the figure that I wanted to be, you know. And I enjoy that. But about your salvation, if you miss the opportunity, that opportunity is forever. If you miss it, you miss it. This is temporary. You will become a little gordita again, you know. If you start to eat again, you will be back to where you, uh, you know, were before. But with the soul, with your salvation, with yourself, no. No. You need to be serious about that. We need to be serious about that. And we never know. That is the only thing that we are not secure when we are going to die. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm going to live a long life, you know? We don't know. We could be dying in a few hours, so we can be dying in a few days. Mm -hmm. We can be dying this year. We may be not able to make next year. And are we ready? Did I'm ready to meet the Lord? Did I'm free of my guilt and my regrets and and everything that really uh, hurt my life when I didn't know the Lord? Hmm? Did I'm really, really serious about my salvation? Well, don't be scared. I see your face and there is a solution for that. Hmm? And the solution is to serve the Lord. It's very simple. I realized that. I was probably like you, trying to write all my sins and to make a discipline and a prayer. I am not going to do this. I'm going to avoid this. I'm going, you know, all my program, you know, and, I, and don't fall in sin. And I realized, you know, I was going crazy. Because no matter what, what I do, I do it wrong because I am not perfect. But what took me away from all of that and helped me, you know, to feel secure that in somehow I may go into made heaven was to forget about all of that and to focus in God, to focus in our lady and to focus in the people. Through something very simple, for me as a priest is simple, is to love everyone and to help everyone. As my as as more I deny myself to myself, to my own pleasure, my own benefit, my own whatever, I'm able to please the Lord better. As more I focus about me and about my pleasures, about what I need, what I want to achieve, where I want to get, then I get worse and I lose my opportunity with the Lord even more. Hmm? That is why the Lord gave us the answer. You want to gain your life, you want to gain your salvation, lose your life for God. That's simple and then you will be able to make it. That is what the, these little children did. Their life changed forever. They could have the normal life that every other children in their town could have. But instead to have that normal life, they lose it. They lose that opportunity of normal life to lose it for the Lord, for the souls. And look, they are in heaven and they are saint. Do you got it? Hmm? And here I imagine it's more difficult because this country has everything that you wish. Hmm? 
Hmm? And that is good, is a blessing, but could be a curse. Hmm? Why? I tell you why, because I break my coffee machine today and in a five minute I can have a new one and replace it and have my coffee no matter what. And I don't suffer. Instead to lose my coffee, if I am in Argentina, we lose our coffee machine, then I need to wait to go to the city to, wear it, to get it and to buy a new one. And I know I won't get the new one that I have. I need to buy another one. But I don't know if it was going to be the same and it's going to make the same coffee. But that make me suffer and make me wait and make me try to, you know, to maybe in the process waiting to buy the coffee machine, I ended to say, I am not going to buy it. I'm just going to buy a tea and make it and start to drink tea, you see? But here, no. I lost my phone, I called the company, they sent me a new one, tomorrow I have the same phone, or one better. It's no time to suffer, we are spoiled. And to be spoiled, yeah, it's a blessing, but in order of our salvation, it's very bad. Because make us convinced that we deserve it, and we can get it no matter what. And no, 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 we won't get it our salvation no matter what. Hmm? We will lose it if we don't stray our path, if we don't do what we are supposed to do. Hmm? It is serious. So we need to think about that. So conversion, the damage that sin caused in my life, hmm? how I repair that, what God is giving me to be able to fix that, and how I can have a peaceful life or a secure life that no matter what happened in the world, I'm going to feel secure that I'm going to be safe and I'm going to go to heaven. Do you have that? I have that. My biggest concern every day when I wake up is that I want to make heaven. No? So I must look into my day, whatever is going to happen, all the, all the choices I'm going to make need to be in order to that. I cannot be distracted on that, because then I may lose it and then I have a problem. Hmm? And that is what these little children were so focused to. And that they wanted to do what the Lord asked them to do to make heaven and to be able to be there. And doing that, they sanctify their life. And be convinced, my sisters, don't be afraid or sad. If you do it, you are going to gain your life. And forever, because that life is eternal, this one ends. So sometimes I... I don't get it, you know, people so stubborn and focused in this life and in the pleasures of this life and the world and, and, and this ended soon, soon enough. Hmm? The one that is coming, it won't end. And that is the one that we need to achieve. Hmm? So, one of, the, uh, one of the questions for you to meditate upon is, you know, what is my reality of sin? What is my reality of sin? In another word, how much I sin? If you tell me, oh Father, I don't sin, then go to confession immediately. That is your first sin. Can I identify my guilt? What guilt do you have? Can I identify my regrets? What regrets do you have?
how much I care about my salvation. How much I care or I'm aware of my family's salvation. <coughs> Make a list of your priorities. Which are your priorities in today's life for you? Again, you know, to help you to don't be scared and afraid. You know, it's simple. We complicate, hmm? but it's very simple. This process of salvation that God gave us is very simple. And he gave us everything that we need. Hmm? And we have the best help. We have Jesus and we have our lady. We have the help of the saint and we have the help of the angels too. Hmm? And the process is more simple than we can imagine. The only thing that and the biggest giant creature that need to be defeated in us is our own ego and when that is defeated then we will be secure and we will be able to do this process the way that it is supposed to but as far our own ego is still there in us and is giant then is we are not secure at all so you know uh, think about that, about your ego. Hmm? Because uh, that is the serious. You know, I've been reading lately, I don't know why, I've been investigating so much about exorcism and uh, diabolic possession. You know? I was part of that when I was with my uh, pastor. My pastor in Argentina was an exorcist and he was a healing priest. So I was in his deliverance ministry. And you know, I've been reading and listening about, you know, the the exorcist, why they wrote and their experience and how how they, you know, uh, how a person could be possessed by the devil. If that that easy or is difficult, it's very easy. The evil is there. You know, more, sometimes more closer than look like, no? Sorry. More closer than God because he wants to make us tricks so he won't leave us alone. Hmm? So it could be, he never can make a possession of us if we don't allow it. No? So to be able, the devil to be able to enter in our lives and to take over is if we uh, ask for that. And never ask, please, because if you do it, forget it. Because the devil is unrespectful, he doesn't respect. So even if you do it jokely, he will come in and that's it. Hmm? So be careful on that. That is the way that happens. But it, when it takes over, it's terrible because it's, it really destroys everything. Destroy the image of God, destroy the image of our lady, destroy destroy your faith, the church, everything that you build up or the Lord build up in you for God is completely, completely destroyed. That is why the possessed people, you know, they cannot hear the name of Jesus, they cannot see the Eucharist, they cannot see the cross or images, nothing. They go crazy because that is what the devil destroys when he takes over. Hmm? But, you know, it, it, it's, been con it's controlled so easily and so simply, you know. The, 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 you know, the, the exorcist asked the devil himself to tell uh, them, you know, how they can be defeated. And they tell. They said one of the, one of the biggest and simple things that destroy the demons is the rosary. And they said in exorcisms, they expressed it, if people will realize the power of the rosary, 
we will be done forever. The spirit says that in in demoniac in the in demonic possession to the exorcist they confess that they confess about our lady this is been the biggest answer for me because i to tell you the truth i was kind of scared of those things you know i i don't want it's, it's, it's kind of crazy and creepy and but this is the biggest revelation that really uh, uh, came up in one, from one of the biggest possession, demoniac, demoniac possession, that the, the devil says, you know, the, the, the biggest fear to our lady. Why he's so afraid to our lady? Because she's no God, and she's a creature, and she can defeat him. Hmm? And that is why the devil hates our lady, because he says he, she is the most pure, humble, loving creature. She's no God, but she has the power to defeat, to defeat and to win the devil. No? So it's simple, my sisters. If we are consecrated to our lady, if we pray the rosary daily, if we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, if we do adoration, there is nothing, nothing, nothing to fear. Hmm? I have people to come to me thinking, Father, I think I have a possession of the devil, I'm oppressed and something. I tell them, I don't do an exorcism because I am not an exorcist. I don't do deliverance because I don't feel called to do deliverance. I just do the healing masses. But I recommend them, pray the rosary daily, go to adoration, and that's it. Hmm? You will be free. It's nothing to fear. Hmm? The problem is here. Many of those people who think that they are oppressed or possessed, there's something here in their mind. You know, they believe that that is the trick that the devil does in them. It's not. The devil cannot take over in you unless you allow you allow it. If you did, then you are in trouble, and then you probably do need an exorcism or a deliverance. But if you never did it, you don't need to worry. Now, the devil used other kind of things to get in, like, you know, witchcraft, like a psychic, you know, people go to fortune tellers and all of that, then those kind of people can, you know, through uh, can make a covenant between you and the devil through them, and then you could be experiencing an oppression or a possession of the of demons in your life or in your family or in your home, because they can do that. The devil is unrespectful, like I said. So people who goes to those kind of things, they could be experiencing demonic possession or oppression. I will say it's more oppression than possession. Because for possession, you need to give permission. And if you never gave permission, you cannot be possessed. Hmm? You could be oppressed, but not possessed. But many people suffer that because people go to those things or practice those things. And then that is the way that the devil enters. And even worse, you know, people who call out the spirit, forget it. They get possessed too, because those spirits enter in, in their bodies. And those spirits are not the dead people. Those spirits are demons. The dead people, the people who die and go to the Lord, they never come back. There is no way to reach them and to talk to them again or one last time. That is a complete lie, is what the devil wants you to believe. When somebody die, they go with the Lord. If they went with the Lord, you won't connect with them, except, except through the memory and the love that you have for each other. But that's it. There is no media there that will connect you and make you talk with your dead person. That is a lie. That dead person that is talking to you is a demon. The demons are free. 
they are a spirit and they are the ones who come and take over to the media or to you and talk to you and pretend to be your loved one who died and that is what the people doesn't realize when they call out the spirit that that is what happened and those demons who come and enter into your body or into your house and to this person who is the media to talk to you and to connect you with your death one then those demons when they come they don't leave they stay and that is why people start to experience the house haunting and and the, the, their places, their house, you know, the TV, the electronic things turns up and, and off alone and all that stuff because the spirit take over and stays there. So be careful with all of that because the evil is very smart to try to get in. Hmm? So all of that is very dangerous. Hmm? That is why the church is very clear and says, no, don't do it. Don't practice any of that. That is a sin. And we need to, you know, respect that because it is the truth. So in your history, if you have any of that, then put it there, you know, because we will pray and ask the Lord for deliverance on that, no, or our family tree, you know, sometimes we never did it, but some of our family did it, and then we got like an infection, and we need to pray for that. But the good thing in all of that is that all of this get fixed so easily. Hmm? How? The rosary, hmm? the Eucharist, hmm? the prayer for from the priest, you know. I know that there is lady people, charismatic people who pray for deliverance. Myself, personally, I don't believe in that. I'm sorry, you know, because you need to have a special uh, power given by the Lord, you know. If I bless you, my blessing is Jesus' blessing. If you bless me, your blessing is your blessing. It's not Jesus' blessing for me. It's your blessing, it's your good intention, and your love, your faith. But it doesn't give you that authority. Hmm? When a lady person bless someone, it doesn't give you that authority. Hmm? That is why, in you know, I research all of this. I know what I'm talking about. You know, that is why ministers, non-Catholic ministers, that they are not ordained priests the right way, and they do deliverance and exorcism, they end it possessed, and they end it losing their mind, and they end it doing bad stuff, because they don't have that sacrament. They don't have that sealing. You know, people need to be sealed to do something like that. Father Victor, he got the ceiling. He got the ceiling from the bishop. The bishop named him the exorcist, and he got the ceiling, and he was able to do it. And he never went crazy. He did the right work, and he died, and went with the Lord. You know, when his job was done, the Lord took him to heaven. But, you know, ministers, women who the ministers and lady people, they don't have that ceiling. If they don't have that ceiling, then it's very dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. You know, that is why if I don't have the ceiling of the bishop, I cannot declare myself an exorcist. I cannot do that. And I cannot do that deliverance by myself because then I will be in a very big trouble. I know two priests that were close to me, that started to do that exorcism and deliverance by themselves. And I told them, don't, don't start, don't do it because, and they, they were, they, they, soon enough, they were out of the priesthood and everything, you know, because you don't do that by your own self. You need a ceiling. Hmm? And it's very dangerous. Very, very, very dangerous. Hmm? So you do that by God's uh, approval and by the church approval. Hmm? So uh, think about that and pray about that too. You know, those things could be 
uh, very uh, dangerous and could be in the family line and we need to get a uh, deliverance and I'm free of those things, you know. Like I said, the rosary, the Eucharist, the word of God, the blessing of the priest, you know, the sealing of the priest helps you and protects you and set you free and all of that. And the biggest one, you know, that is the first one that you cannot miss is confession. If you bring all of this, this stuff in confession then and you got the solution, it's completely done. It's, it's erased. It's gone. You are free. And you need to be convinced. Hmm? Because sometimes people give all of this in confession and then they instill a struggling in their mind. They instill feeling oppressed because the devil makes you to feel that you are not free. That that didn't work. And it did work. What is not working is your mind that got stuck in the devil idea, you know? That is the thing. So realize that confession does work. When you confess your sins and you give all of this in confession and you get the solution, you get completely free. And your family also. If involves your family and in confession, you touch people in confession, you know, those people are getting free along with you too. Hmm? So realize that and be convinced of that because that is the truth. Hmm? And that is why Our Lady comes to this world several times to repeat the same exactly thing to us. What we are supposed to do to be able to make heaven. Hmm? So let us uh, ask the Lord then in this moment to walk with us in this meditation about our salvation Lord Jesus we ask you to cover us with your precious blood and to help us to realize in us those things that could jeopardize our salvation. Lord, I know that you love me. And I know that you already saved me. But it's up to me to achieve it. And today and this morning, you want to help me, Lord, to be free of those things that bound me for a long time. Could be my ego, selfishness, my pride, my pride, my control, my manipulation. Could be my guilt, my regrets. My sins, my fears, my struggles, my problems, my family, today, Lord, I really, I really want you. to be completely yours and to feel completely free and to be confident that I am in the right path and I am 
walking with you. I'm walking with our lady. And I am doing the right things in my life right now. Please, Lord, speak to me and help me to be confident, to be at peace, to be secure, to don't be afraid. To be abandoned in our lady's arms and in your arms. Heavenly Father, in your word that we just read, you said to us that the true bread is your son that came down from heaven, from heaven to give his life for the salvation of the world that include us. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to let your Son to free us, to redeem us, to save us, to heal us, to strengthen us, to save us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.